So let's start with a, a few review on toric variety. Uh, actually, I will be very elementary. So a toric variety is, is a class of algebraic varieties, uh, which consists of an algebraic variety and though with an action of a torus, so that there is a <coughs> one orbit, which is the risky dance in the variety, an orbit and those torus. So essentially, this is uh, your torus, n-dimensional torus, little n will be the dimension of the long speed. And uh, you glue to it some sub -tor some torus of lower dimension. So for example, I draw a, a little picture at the bottom. And this is the fan of the projective space, the projective plane, actually. So you have three lines which meet in a point, And the point represents the dense orbit, so your uh, torus of dimension 2. And then each line represents the torus of dimension 1 that you can glue on the hyperplane of coordinates. And e eventually, the cones correspond to the points, the three points you have to add to get your complete uh, projective space. Now, when you have uh, a variety, you consider divisors. And in the context of toric varieties, you want to consider toric divisors, which are divisors which are invariant under the action of the torus. And those can, again, be uh, described in terms of combinatorial uh, invariants. More precisely, uh, such a divisor on an affine chart will be defined by a monomial. And the exponent of the monomial give you a linear form on the corresponding cone. Uh, and here I have written the uh, function u1, u2, which, on, which send u1, u2 to some value, uh, which define, which is associated to the divisor at infinity of the projective plane. And so you have this combinatorial object. It is a fan. So a fan is a collection of cones, such that the intersection of two cones is again in the collection. But this fan is a lattice fan that is, it sits in R2, for the example here. But R2 is endowed with, uh, contains the Z2. So the lattice inside. And lattice fan means that the edges are rational. So we have lattice fan support function, which describe the toric divisor. And to this, by Legend, Legend validity, we can associate the stability set of the support function. There's a function which is associated to the divisor is called the support function. And uh, in this case, this is the uh, simplex I have drawn on the right. Okay. So, uh, so there are now the beautiful thing is that in this dictionary between the algebraic varieties on the combinatorial data, uh, we can read geometric properties on the combinatorial data. And for example, if the fan is complete, that is, all the cones covers the space, then the variety is projective. And when you look at the divisor, the stability set may be, of course, empty. A function which is not concave may have an empty set. And uh, the property that the support function is concave implies that the polytop will be non-empty and will be actually n-dimensional. And it will mean also that the divisor is nef. Or if the function is strictly concave, then you will have a divisor which is ample. Okay. And in this setting, one beautiful result is that if you, you have your, your variety, you have your divisor, so you can compute the degree of the variety with respect to this divisor, and it's turned out to be 
just n factorial times the volume of the polytope which is associated. So this is non-zero when d is naff. Okay, so this is for the toric variety. And here we have the other side, the height. So the height is a very important uh, quantity, a concept in uh, arithmetic. We generalize actually the concept of degree in geometry, which is a refinement if you want, and which measures the complexity of objects which are defined over the field of rational numbers. And for example, we have first to define the height of rational numbers themselves. And this is easy. You take a fraction, A over B, maybe it's not reduced, so you call B the GCD, and the height is just the logarithm. Well, logarithm because we consider logarithmic height, but uh, it has no, no importance, is the maximum of the absolute value of the numerator and denominator. Okay? But there is a way to rewrite it, which is uh, e more easier to, to understand, is that if you consider not only the usual absolute value, when I say absolute value of A over D, I mean the usual absolute value of rational numbers, but you can also consider on the field Q all the periodic absolute values. And you have the product formula which tells you that the product of all the absolute value of uh, non-zero rational number D is one. And then this allows you to rewrite the logarithm of the maximum of the, of, of the absolute value of the numerator and the numerator as a sum of the log max of the absolute value of A and B over all the places, of the, all the absolute value of Q, that is, the usual one and the pen. Okay. Oops. Okay. And when you have this, well, it's easy to to understand what will be the height of a point in a projective space. We had two numbers, a over b, and we we could consider it as the coordinate of a point in P1. If we have more uh, coordinates. Then we just have to replace the maximum of the absolute value by some norm. So we can take for each absolute value v a norm on uh, q uh, to the power uh, n plus 1, the number, of, uh, and uh, consider the sum. There you have to be careful and put some uh, uh, condition on your collection of norms. That is, you have to ensure that the sum is not infinite. And actually, we, we put a strong condition which ensures that there is, for a, any x, there is only a finite number of terms which is not zero. Although, say it differently, this is uh, only for each x, only a finite uh, number of absolute value of, of norm is different from one. And we can rewrite this in a still different way by introducing the norm on the bottom right bottom, the norm on the a metric, sorry, on the line bundle associated to the divisor at infinity. So we know that the section of this uh, line bundle can be identified with linear forms. And we define the norm of the linear form at x to be just the absolute value of L of x divided by the norm of x does not depend on the choice of coordinate of x. Okay, and then when you have done that, thanks to the product formula, you get the formula on the right, that is the height is minus the sum of the logarithm of the norm of the section. And this leads you to the notion we, sh we should put on a variety, a general variety with a divisor, that is, we have to put metrics on the space of rational section of the divisor, which are compatible. Each We have a collection, actually. For each absolute value of Q, we put a metric corresponding, which is compatible with this absolute value on the space of rational section. And then, with this, so we get the notion of a metrized divisor, that is a divisor, 
the VIP divisor and we endowed it with uh, a collection of, uh, an adelic collection of met metrics. And now we can just define the analog of the degree of x with respect to the divisor d, which is the height of x with respect to the metrized divisor d bar. And this is defined in a somewhat similar way, but first it's decomposed in local height. So there is this sum over all the absolute value of the local height of x. And uh, to define this local height, we use a, an induction procedure starting from the point, which, has, which I have just explained before, which is of dimension zero. Then you define the height of uh, a variety of dimension uh, one by Bezout formula. That is, you intersect with a divisor and you find points. You know that their uh, height. And then you have Bezout formula, which tell you what will be the height of the uh, one-dimensional variety. And then you, you continue this way. And you define the local height in this way. Then you sum up. And one point is that when I say to define the height V, you have to cut by some divisor. This is, you have to choose this divisor. When you have a line bundle, you can choose an, an E section. So the local height depends on the choice of some auxiliary section, but the global height does not, thanks to the product formula again. Now, when we are on toric varieties, we want to consider toric metrics. That is metrics invariant under the torus. But uh, this is too much. This will need only the trivial metric. So we require only that the metric is invariant under the action of the compact subtorus of the principal orbit. And then one of our uh, main results is that we have, just as we had the, this bijection between support function, polytop, and divisor, we have a bijection between toric metric and continuous function on the fan, the difference of which with the support function is bounded. And uh, corresponding uh, notion of NEF will here be semi-positive. That is, the metric is semi-positive the corresponding function is concave. And now, if we have this uh, semi-positive function, we have the associated function is uh, concave, and by Legendre duality, it's defined some function on the polytop, on the stability set of the support function. And now, this uh, function encodes most of the metric, just as uh, the, the polytop itself and the support function were encoding the, the geometry of the divisor, this function encodes the arithmetic of the metric div divisor. And we call this function roof function because you can imagine the polytop, and over it you have uh, a concave function like a roof. Actually, I have a, a, a little drawing. We can describe the roof function as uh, the concave envelope of the graph of the function which to a point of the polytop, which correspond actually to a to a section, we send the minus the logarithm of the soup norm of this section. And for example, here I've drawn the roof function for the pullback of the canonical metric of P2 on P1 through this application to T, one T if you want, you send one over T, one over two T. And this means that the polytop associated will be minus one, one, because the exponent goes from one over t to t. And above each of the point minus one, zero, one, I will put the logarithm of the absolute value of the coefficient. And so for the place, so for the absolute value t, two addict absolute value, we will find that the absolute value of one half is two, so we find log two. And for the other places, uh, 
absolute value, sorry, we will have uh, either minus some negative or zero. So this gives that the roof function is zero for all the, the absolute value except for two. And for two, this is this uh, little tent which go up to log two. And of course, we have a special, uh, th this function, which is zero, is a special function which corresponds to the support function. The support function corresponds to the zero function on the polytop by Legend duality. And by our theorem, it corresponds to a metric, a special metric, and we call it the canonical metric. And with this, we, at end, we have everything to define uh, the height, I explained before. And we have this concave function for each uh, absolute value. We sum them, we get the global roof function, and we have the analog of the formula, which I mentioned earlier, for the degree, that the height of x with respect to the metrized divisor is n plus one factorial, because I said we have increased by one the dimension. We have the polytop, which is of dimension n, and we have added a function above it. And the integral of the roof function on the polytop. So, so much for the height. And now we have special metrics that we can describe, which come from polytops. More precisely, we take some polytop, I call it gamma now, because this will not be my polytop the same as the, the one before. And I imagine it is defined by this linear form, x, x color uf plus some constant. And then I assume uh, that the, the norm of the vector us is proportional to the volume of the face f which is defined by this uh, corresponding linear form. And I can form the roof function, which is written, that is the sum of this linear form times the logarithm of this linear form. And the prototype of this kind of uh, roof function is the Fubinich 2D metric. I give here the roof function of the associated to the Fourier to the metric, which is the Legend dual to the function, uh, the logarithm of the norm of the section. Okay, so now there is a little picture. There is my big polytop gamma. And I will dis I describe now some random variables. So I pick x inside gamma and I divide gamma in cones with vertex at x and base on each faces of gamma. So I draw them in green here. And now uh, the random variable simply send to uh, some y uniformly uh, chosen in gamma. The facet it's, uh, of the cone it belongs to. So this gives me a random variable, and clearly the prob probability that this random variable takes the value f is the ratio of the volume of the corresponding cone, for example, the yellow cone, uh, divided by the volume of gamma, the, the whole of gamma. And when we have a random variable, we have its entropy. So the entropy is minus the sum over all the eventuality, so all the facets of the probability times the log of the probability. And the formula is that if I consider the height I have defined uh, earlier, produce pages, divided by the degree, this is, uh, I should say, this ratio has meaning in arithmetic uh, by itself. And even if you divide by n plus 1, where n is the dimension, c is just a normalization factor I have introduced. 
Well, this is equal to the average of the entropy of the random variable I've just explained. Something a little strange. And um, I would like to mention uh, in, the, in the last uh, minutes that to perform all the, the computation of those kind of metrics and to, to compute the height, we need to integrate actually uh, functions which factorize through a linear form. So if we, if we consider a function which is maybe n time continuous derivable on R, and then we consider the function, the nth derivative, and composed with the linear form, then we want to integrate this on some polytope delta. And uh, what we show is that there is a formula which actually generalizes the well-known formula that the integral of a to b of f prime of x is equal to f of a minus f of b. This is the same in higher dimension. And uh, you see that it involves not only the value of f on, uh, on, uh, some, uh, at some point, but also of the derivative up to the dimension of the polytope. So now the important thing is what is V and what is this coefficient? So this is explained before. So we call, we introduce the notion of aggregate, which is since we have we, our linear forms, we just look at the uh, parallel, the, the hyperplane, which are parallel to this uh, or orthogonal to the vector U and which contain faces of delta and the union of all the faces which are contained in one hyperplane, we call this an aggregate. Okay. And then, for the polytop, a, 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 a vector u and an aggregate v, we define the corresponding function recursively by this formula. And, uh, for example, here, I've written uh, the, f the general formula you can have for the simplex, so uh, which which can be given either by the convex R of uh, n plus one point in the R n, or the intersection of n plus one hyperplane. And in both uh, cases, we can compute the co indirectly the, the coefficient. Okay, I would like to mention that uh, this came from uh, the work too. This is, we, we wrote an asterisk book uh, on this uh, subject. Uh, but this was not the first time that entropy appeared in, uh, in connection with height, because uh, 15 years ago, there has been a book published by uh, Graham Everest and Thomas Ward, uh, which was linking height of polynomials and entropy, but this is a di somewhat different kind of entropy, this is an entropy of a dynamical system. And so it seems that there is uh, some uh, relation between this notion of height, which is really crucial in arithmetic, which measures some complexity of numbers and things like that, and the notion of entropy, which uh, measures more disorders Okay, well, I think I will stop here. Yeah, thank you.